Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. So I guess I'm going to talk about my product here, and it is going to be um, our Tabots reporting. And so if we take and actually look at the application. So when you load the application, what you're going to see is you're going to see a data container. So this piece inside of here is what you guys can change to take and actually make it your own. So currently we have the actual ACG forms in here, the commissioning forms in here. So if you didn't have your own commissioning forms, you could take and actually start by using the ACG forms that are included inside of our system. So in order to take and actually add a form, you literally just take and select the form and you click on the button to add that form. As you can see, this right here looks and acts a lot like Excel, but it's not really Excel. So you have the functionality to be able to take and type information in. And so anywhere that you see this kind of yellow cream colored block, this is going to be where you can actually enter information in. Now we have chosen to take and use the icon sets in order to format these columns here. So if you're going through and you're doing your checklist, you have the ability to take and actually use a zero for X or use a one for check. Or if you use a negative one, then it's going to take and put a flag on there. But you do have the ability to take and type in other values in there as well. So if you wanted to take and choose to take and use it like NA or whatever, you can do that. The other thing that's really great about our system is you have control over how the information looks. So let's say, for example, on this NA, you really wanted it to be red and you wanted it to take in, you know, stand out. And you said, OK, I want that to also be bold. You can make those changes on the fly. So you have the ability to do those things as well. So if I take and move this out of the way and I go back here to the front. So this right here is a cover page. It is our default cover page you can take and have whatever cover page you want to. Again, this piece inside of here is your controller. So you have the ability to be able to take and actually make it your own. The other thing that's great about our system is, in addition to this, you also have the ability to take and put in comments directly inside of here as well. And the beautiful thing about that is, is if you use a project summary page, this right here is a form that we developed specifically for being able to do these type of things. When you go to take and actually present this actual report, what that's going to do is that is going to look at every single one of those pages and it is going to take and automatically accumulate those project summary items on the actual project summary page. So as you can see, this is the actual document that would be presented to your customer. It is in a PDF at standpoint. So you would take and actually either save that or you could email that directly. If you're on a very large project and the actual report itself has a lot of images in it, you want to take and put photo galleries in here to explain what you're doing and it's going to be too large for an email, you can request to be able to publish that. And what that'll do is that'll take and put that report um, in our cloud server and you'll get a link to that report and then you can send that link to your customer and say here go click this link and get your report you have the ability to control that link and you can determine how long you want that report to be available to that customer so again having the ability to take and publish your reports to the cloud you can do that as well Another feature of our report builder here is the ability to add watermarks. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take and actually do a preliminary for whatever reason. I could take and come in and say I would like to add a watermark to that. I then have the ability to control things like its color. So if I wanted to take and actually follow our color guidelines and I'll say I'll make it 60% um, transparent and then I'm going to apply that and then that becomes the watermark. You have the ability to create your own watermarks. As you can see in our system, I've created a watermark called confidential for some of the confidential projects that we may do. And so this allows me to be able to create certain things for your eyes only, whatever happens to be that case. So when you do the print preview, we do generate the table of contents for you. The beautiful thing about our table of contents is it is a hyperlink enabled. So basically clicking on an item in your table of contents will automatically take and jump you to that page in the report. 
But we were talking about these comments. As you can see, these comments are on this page here for this air handling unit. If you go to the preliminary, or go to the uh, project summary page, what I have done is I have summarized those actual items inside of this actual report. So as you go through and you're creating deficiency items or you're creating items of note, then you can take and have them included inside of your report in a summary type document automatically. In addition to that, you do have the ability to take and edit those items. So let's say, for example, you did shortcut nomenclature in here and you wanted to take and actually on the project summary, you wanted to elaborate on it. What you can do is you can come here and you can type in whatever you want it to say. And so whatever's on the report can be different than what you actually put on the project summary. You also have the ability to identify something as don't print. You're like, okay, this is really a notable comment. And so I don't want to take and actually print that on the report. So you have the ability to do either of those things. Can you manipulate the forms to fit our company profile? And the answer is yes. So you can literally take, and well, you also have the ability to modify these as well. So we give you a function called our blank form controller. It is a part is a, an application that we developed to be able to take and make those um, make those answers to that question. So basically to be able to go in and change the wording in here, change, you know, how the system is looked at. Um, or if you have your own report forms, you have the ability to take and actually submit those to us and we can bring them into the system and then you can have your own custom forms as well. So again, that would give you the ability to have a custom container here with your own report forms. Good question. In addition to that, so as you go through, you have the ability to add other things in here as well. So having the ability to import additional items in here. So commissioning agents do lots and lots of observations and typing. So having the ability to import a document and having that ability to take and actually include that type of information into the system is also something else that we take and provide for you. So if I come here and I go and bring up my documents. So this is an example of an actual uh, functional performance testing in a Word document that was provided to us by um, well, something I did years ago. But it gives you the ability to take and actually utilize Word documents inside of the system to be able to take and do your summaries or do whatever. So as you can see here, this Word document is six pages in itself. And so this is a way for you to take and include, you know, additional functionality. You could do observation sheets. You could create templates and we could put them on your dashboard. And then you could just go click a template and it will populate that document. And then you can make the changes or modifications that you need. So you'll notice that this actual form was presented at the back of the actual report. So I do have the ability to right click and I can move this form wherever I want it to be in the report. So let's say I want it to be right after the project summary. I can move that there. Again, you have the ability to rename these forms. Whatever the name is on the tab is by default what goes on the table of contents. So for example, if I were to take and rename this RTU-2, then that is going to be the name that's going to show up on the table of contents. Likewise, if you take and go to the utility ribbon and go to manage forms, you have the ability to take and actually force a different name. So you could say this is the RTU serving West Wing child care. And so now then the system will take and use that on your table of contents versus the actual name of the tab. So you have control over how you want the data to be presented on your table of contents as well. In addition to that, you do have the ability to color tabs. So if I wanted to take and say, let's say I'm doing multiple systems. So I'm just going to take and choose these items here and I'm going to choose this color of tab here. And I'm going to apply that to all those tabs. And then I'm going to choose, let's make the assumption that this is a secondary system, you know, or a phase two project or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to take and color those as well. So giving you the ability to color tabs also gives you the ability to organize your project so that it makes sense to you. 
Having the ability to color tabs also is enhanced by the fact that you can take and choose to filter by color. So let's say, for example, I'm working on purple tabs. I have the ability to come in here and I can say, just show me the purple tabs and apply that to my forms. Now then, I'm only looking at the purple tabs. So this gives me a clear, concise view of what it is that I'm actually working on. So you can take and jump back and forth in between your color tabs at, you know, anytime that you want to by physically saying, I want to see just this. Your first row is always your filter row. So you do have the ability to take and filter. One of those choices is obviously by color, but you can also take and filter by whether it's been done or not. So as you're going through and you're working on these items here, so let's say for example, I'm working on our rooftop unit number two and I'm done with that. I can literally take and mark that form as being done. And then now then I know that I don't have to take and necessarily go back in and do any more work on that. But let's say for example, on this one here, I need to do something. I need to remember to go do something. You have the ability to take and actually mark this form as needing your attention. And then you can pair that with an actual tech note to say, I need to do something here. And then you have the ability to put in a timestamp if you want to, and then save that. You're going to have two ways to remember that. One is when you click back on that tab, you're going to have a tech note show up in bright red to indicate that there's a note on there. You don't have to pair it with a needs attention. You can put a note on any tab you want to by just simply putting in a note. But this right here is tied to need attention. And the reason being is because when you go to look at this project or open this project again, you have the ability to say, hey, show me what I still need to do. Well, show me the notes that I've made on this project. Show me anything that I've marked as needing attention. Likewise, you also have the ability to see what is done. So if you say, show me what's done, but typically field guys are more interested in what's not done. So you have the ability to say, well, okay, I know what's done. Now, what have I left to do? So you have the ability to go through and quick filter your project to be able to take and do that. And so when you take and actually do your actual print preview, so let's say, for example, I come back in here and I print preview again, I have that Word document on the end. It was a six-page Word document because I had made a six-page Word document. When I go to print this actual project, you'll notice that on the table of contents, two things I want to point out. One is that custom naming that we did. So here's the RTU serving the West Wind Child Care. That's one of the items. But you'll also notice that on the last page of the actual table of contents that we had the ability to take and actually see the actual Word document is included inside of there. And you have the ability to take and look at the number of items that are also available to you. Now, you have the ability to take in on any particular form like this right here. We're using icon sets because they're asking for questions and they're using this check mark to be included. But you'll notice that on some of these, these right here are going to be yes, no values. So are true, false values. So if I come in here and find one, yeah, here's pass fail. We've also included the ability to take and actually put in drop down values to be able to put in pass fail and NA by default. You have control. So let's say, for example, on your forms or on these forms, you wanted to create an actual drop down arrow to be able to choose some particular, you know, variance or whatever. In the blank form controller, you have the ability to be able to take and actually choose what choices you want to have available to you. In our case, pass, fail, and NA. Another thing that I want to point out to you is, is something else that we've included in our system recently is the ability to sign directly into the application. So when you're going through and you're making these, um, these observations or whatever, and you're wanting to take and sign that, you can literally just double click on the block and it'll bring up the signature block and you can either draw your signature, you can write your signature, or you can import an actual signature that you have somewhere else. So those options are available to you inside of here to be able to take and actually um, use that in the system. So you have the ability to take and choose how you want to sign the forms. And you can sign them directly in the system without having to export them and sign, et cetera, et cetera. So that is about 14 minutes and 20 seconds. So I'm going to pause there because Sia told me I had to stop talking at 15 minutes, which I don't like. <laughs> All right. What questions do you guys have?
Yeah, feel free again to use the Q&A button in your Zoom window if you have any questions for Derek. Uh, Derek, while we're waiting for that, um, we did have a pre-prepared question uh, if you wanted to talk about whether and how your product works on an iPad. Oh, so we do also have the have a web portal that mimics this. So the functionality that you have on the desktop application, you would have the ability to take and log in to the web application and you have the basic same functionality that you do from the desktop application. The web application is obviously much more powerful and we highly recommend it because you're going to get a lot more control and functionality out of it. But if you do want to take and go to the field and do observations, then you can take and actually use the web uh, portal to be able to do that. Good question. Thanks, Ray. All right, any other questions, comments, suggestions? If project has 200 AHUs, shall I add them one by one or can they be added? Oh, absolutely. So let's say for example, I'm on this system right here. I have a multitude of ways to get in multiple units. One of those is to take and go to the manage forms. And if you click on this item here, you can batch copy and you can take and copy hundreds of units. It says a hundred maximum, but I've done 200 before it doesn't seem to complain. So you do have the ability to batch copy and you can select multiple items. So let's say you've got a whole system and you want to batch copy those multiple times, you can. You also have the ability to take and click on copy form and you can copy those multiple times as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Do you have a phone tablet application for the software? Yeah, our web application does actually allow you to be able to take and actually log in and do stuff. And it is, it's, um, it's a web application that works offline. So it allows you to take and work on a phone, work on an iPhone, work on an Android, work on an iPad, work on a Mac, work on a PC. So it's a universal application. It doesn't give you all the same control as it does the desktop application, but it does give you that ability to be able to take and actually enter data into there. What are the desktop requirements? Does the web page need internet access? So web page doesn't need internet access. It needs internet access long enough to be able to obviously get to the project. I mean, obviously I can't do something offline if I've not ever seen it. So you have to go be online long enough to load the project. Once the project's loaded, then you can go offline and collect the data. The desktop requirements are, the minimum requirements are an i5 processor or better, and eight gigs of RAM or better, and a 128 gigabyte hard drive. So we develop our application against the Microsoft Surface. So um, that's a, one of the minimum specs of the Microsoft Surfaces. We typically choose kind of an i5, um, i5-8-128 configuration, but anything better than that is even better. Uh, can you use it in offline mode in the field or do you have to be connected? It has offline mode and online mode. I am currently in online mode as indicated by the word office. If I had logged in as a technician, then I would be in offline mode. So I'd be online long enough to download the project to my local device. And then I could be offline and carry it with me and do everything that I need to do in the project. And then when I get back to an internet connection, just go back online and then synchronize and it would copy all that information up to the cloud. And then you'd be able to take and do whatever you need to. All right, any additional questions or comments? I have two minutes. Yep, again, use that Q&A button. Uh, Derek has a couple more minutes left here. While we're waiting, Derek, is there anything that you think you didn't cover um, in your oh, initial? Absolutely. Just a, anything There's quick? hundreds of things I didn't Hey, know. I'm not giving you any extra time. I'm just saying, this is just filler. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, Instrument calibrations, I mean, on, um, you know, if you are printing your instruments and instrument calibrations, we do that automatically for you. You just upload your certificates to your instrument collection, and then that would take and automatically print those in your collection. Um, we have the ability to take and if your forms do take and actually put in your equipment used for testing or whatever, you can assign equipment to a form. And once the equipment is assigned to a form, it'll automatically print those calibration certificates for you. So you have a way to manage all those instruments. If you have a comment section and you want to automate the comment section, um, then you can do that as well. Do you support unit conversions? And the answer is yes. We have some um, not US based customers that we do that for. So we can take and, and do unit conversions on there. Yes, sir. Or ma'am, sorry. 
Um, I think that is going to be the most of my time. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Again, if you have any questions or comments, I think Ray is going to present our information to all of the attendees so that you can reach out to me for a demonstration. I'd love to take and have a further discussion with you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you. That's correct. Thank you, Derek. Uh, so we'll get to our first giveaway here. Uh, and this is how they're going to work uh, for all of the uh, for all of the ones for the rest of the tech showcase. Uh, as noted on the screen, uh, if you are interested in being entered uh, to possibly win the giveaway, enter uh, tab opt using the chat button this time, not the Q&A uh, into your Zoom window. And we will choose that winner randomly from among those who do that. We'll then share your name with uh, Derek and Ameritech and they'll get in touch with you. And uh, most importantly, the prize that uh, Ameritech is giving away is a certificate for one year of free access to TabOps with a prize voucher worth $1,200 redeemable for TabOps products and services. So again, if you're interested in that, go ahead and enter that uh, in the chat window. Just enter tab ops, because again, we're looking for those who are uh, actively paying attention to uh, Derek's wise words about his product. And just as a clarity on that, it is $1,200 in value of tab ops products and services. You can use that towards your yearly hosting if you uh, want, to, but it's, it is $1,200 value. Yep. Thank, thank you for the clarification, Derek. Yep, no problem. And we're just going to hold on for a minute here. Our behind the scenes operations wizard, Sim, is collecting all those responses and then she'll let me know who the lucky winner is. I hope it's the anonymous attendee. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it looks like we have our winner. Uh, so Mr. Daniel Denning, congratulations. You are the lucky winner of the TabOps giveaway and we will get your information communicated to Derek and he will be in touch with you, I'm sure very soon. Uh, so thank you all uh, for attending the first of our, of our six uh, showcase. We're gonna take a very short break here and we'll be back uh, 1.30 sharp uh, to hear from Blue Rhythm. Thank you. <laughs>